and we also invite Lakesh to discuss things. I'm Max Steinberg, a human from Earth's solar system Milky Way Galaxy. Yes, I know who you are now. the civilization and cultures who would welcome human visitors. Is, are you responding to this invitation? Perhaps. Human visitors would be welcome. Thank you. But I 
him not a spokesman for this kind of transaction. So what's your specialty? Communications. Are you a reptilian? Yes. What race is it? None of... None of yours that you know. No, I, uh... <laughs> Are you Milky Way Galaxy? No questions. Oh. One... Uh, I see... I understand. I am here. I have been told to awaken you of facts unknown. Do you understand there is undercurrent there are negative forces against you that are not seen by those trying to help you. We see these forces and are concerned. You must Be aware of what thoughts come through your mind daily that seem unnatural. <laughs> oh, you. These must be suppressed. For example? I know no example, for I cannot be in your mind. Like hunger? No, I am craving for sweets. Is it unnatural? It could be that, because that would destroy the body eventually. Anything that could hurt the body can be suggested by them. Are these reptilians? They are. What technology do they use to send the thoughts? We are just aware of it now. That is why we're here. So we do not understand this technology. So this is sent to the whole population to, or to specific individuals? This is to all population. <sighs> I can not stay. Thank you for this news. That's very important. And thank you for... We wish attention. only the best. Your people, but we are not as strong as others. We have many weaknesses in our bodies to this kind of energy that they control. Much appreciation and thank you. Be well. Be well.
be vigilant. Ooh. Hey, Jim. Hi. No more. No more. Is that today? No, no, that's... that was... No. What was that reptilian? Oh, I'm itchy all over. Alright, that's that's about it. Um uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We have another session. So Jim has uh, two sessions scheduled for later today, private sessions, and we have a, a webinar scheduled for Saturday, ten AM New York time, and you're welcome to join. Uh Volunteer optional donation is ten dollars via PayPal, but if you don't have money, you don't have to pay. Um, uh, Skype or telephone. So if you give me your telephone number, I can add you to the conversation. Uh, your face will not be recorded. We'll have Jim, uh, Lisa, and I sitting here, and um, we'll hear your questions from our, the speakers and and not answer the questions. Ooh. Who was that last person? Uh, it was a nice reptilian. Uh, his message was that the reptilians have some energy weapons, uh, mind control weapons, where they put uh, negative thoughts to humans, messing things up, like uh, negative, you know, something which will destroy the society or the body. Uh, um, was, suicidal, maybe. He was uh, very creepy. It was a reptilian, you know. Yeah, but I mean, he didn't hurt me, but or anybody just felt creepy. That's all. Yeah. Uh, thank you for going through that. You know. Yeah, that's okay. You are kind I of. Mean, okay, yeah. You are kind of. I'm a vessel. Whoever is good, come in, and you know, a dinosaur, a good dinosaur goes inside you, and uh, how do you feel with the dinosaur inside you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Was that a dinosaur? <laughs> I don't know. He didn't say. I don't know. Seems... He refused to answer that question. He was very... I don't know. I can't... There's not a word. There's not a word that I know of that might describe what I felt. It wasn't bad feeling, but it wasn't a, a good feeling either. It was sort of in between. But it was like... Uh, I knew he didn't... I knew he meant no harm, but it was just a... A kind of creepy feeling, that's all. Creepy is the best word. Creepy. Creeped in a creepy feeling. Just a creepy feeling, a little bit, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, ugh. <laughs> like, ugh. Like if there was a salamander inside or something, so. Creepy it's very salamander. slimy, creepy. Slimy salamander. Maybe he was a slimy salamander. I don't know. <laughs> Well, but thanks anyway for coming through. That's essential, I guess. Anything oh. else you need to discuss? The donations is our common th topic. Um, yeah, the money are needed. Um, uh, my, uh, I have a brother in uh, in Moscow who is near death, and uh, he asked me for nine hundred dollars, and he often does it, and he all, always kind of asks to borrow but never returns and you know uh, I'm the oldest in the family now all our you know parents are have died long time ago again because of Russia and poverty and uh, all its stress you know what America has now Russia had in tons more in 90s was like 25 years ago no 15 oh, it's only, no yeah 25 25 years ago we went through that it was a depression and it was no, kids were, my, I had two kids and they were hungry, and that was stressful. Um, so, he, he asked me $500, and I don't have an income. <laughs> and, you know, and 
saying no is tough. Yeah. I, and I saying yes is tough. I know you sent it to him, didn't you? So, yeah, you, I prayed, I didn't say no, I didn't say yes, and I kind of was thinking and thinking and thinking, and then I realized, you know, I have a few relatives, younger relatives, but I'm 50, so they are, whatever, 40s, they're mostly in the 40s, and my children, the bigger, ch bigger children, they also, they have jobs, so I wrote a mail to everybody saying, you know, Sashka, if you know, you remember him, some of them remember, uh, you know, asks for money, and this is a good cause, because he really needs, you know, he needs that thing there, and... Uh, in donations, uh, I got a birthday present, $500, from a distant relative. Nice. And uh, uh, my biggest daughter sent, just sent a check of $400. And my son sent, you know, $80. And someone else of relatives sent $400. So he got even $1,200. Wow, he said 13, wow. He, he got 1380 instead of 800 he, he asked for. And it all will, will go to very good use. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with, you know, how he handled the money, but in this case, it was obviously a good cause. So, the lesson was, you know, <laughs> I, I'm now an expert in asking, so I raised... And there was another... You know, at the same week, there was another, th uh, you know, another similar situation. There was, in my business, we needed to move forward a certain thing. And uh, I also went around and asked for money. I got another thousand dollars in, it's more like investments, but, you know, where when you don't have income, it's more, more donation than investment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in one week, I raised whatever, over two thousand dollars asking. So I'm now professional. It's new for me. <laughs> I'm so please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please, uh, poor Jewish, uh, Jew, poor Jew from Russia and uh, and Catholic. You know how do you call yourself? Uh, um, well, I'm not Catholic, but I do go to a Catholic church now. What? Well, not you grow raised as I a was, Catholic? Uh, no, I was a Wesleyan. What's that? A Wesleyan Methodist, Wesleyan Methodist, and I went to United Wesleyan College, so I was not Catholic until I came to Rochester, and um, some of my friends went to Catholic Church, and uh, my friend Bob Wilcox went to Catholic Church, and I went with him, and I really liked the church, so I've been, I don't belong to the church, but I am an outreach um Minister for the church to Dorothy Day House, which is for the homeless. I'm their representative. How is it possible that the homeless have a house? Well, that's just it. We take them off the street and put them in a home. It's housing for the homeless. You but they stop being homeless as soon well, as they get in the house. Yes, right. Exactly. But and if they were homeless, we put them in a house. It's called housing first. Do they continue living there or you kind of... Well, out no, they continue living there until they're able to get their own place. And you call it a wet house? A wet house. A wet house is when they're still drinking and using drugs and things of that nature. But they do, after we get them, their SSI, their uh, food, SSI? Uh, uh, Social Security income, or DSS, which is Disability Social Security, or whatever it's called. I only know the initials, pretty much. But um, they get them on these uh, programs. Then they start taking rent from them and start be, uh, doing counseling on them so that they can become uh, part of the actual thinking and voting part of society. So... And so I take donations. Most of them are clothes. You've given many things. Yeah, and we, we and just mentioned that to friends, and now friends bring some yes. new stuff, and right. some of that stuff is pretty good. And clothes, and the, the thing they need most is like toiletries, toilet paper, paper towels, the stuff that goes away fast, um, toothbrushes, and uh, things. Well, we're not asking you guys. Well, we're not asking for that. No, no, no. Because PayPal is best. Yeah. Checks but are good too, and if you have money and don't know how to transfer it, call us and we'll figure it out. But anyway, um, no, no a, I didn't mean to get into that. that no, was, no, it's, it's connected. Yeah. Um, what, Jim br broke his, his glasses. He was, you know, he was like, <laughs> with bro he was broke. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, I mentioned that on the site and someone, Rory, thank you, uh, uh, pledged to pay for his glasses. That was nice, thank you. So he didn't have a way to transfer the money, we found someone else in the UK who was able to transfer the money and it, it worked, worked fine. And I got glasses. That's Where something else I wanted to mention. I forgot. I put that them down now, put them down over there. Oh but yeah, it, the kids are... So in Russia, that's another story about being poor. Kids kind of grow with a sense of being poor and that's a shame, you know, some kids grow up with a sense of being, you know, having whatever they wish to, even though they don't get it, but there is at least a self-perception of being well off. Yes. Actually, I grew to five years with self-perception of being well off and then it kind of changed just to opposite. So my kids, all, all four, which grew with me, grow with the sense that, you know, we are poor and we can <laughs> afford it. Although Mike, with the same situation, he says, I have tons of money and he has a lot of change in his jar, but he feels that he is rich. Mm -hmm. You know, paper he doesn't count, he didn't count until recently, he didn't, you know, care for paper, but, you know, some of the jingle is, is tons of that, he mm -hmm. has tons of that. So, uh, the story is that I, we go on the street and the lamp just goes off and on the big lamp post. And I ask my son, you know, what do you think about that? And he says, you will fix it. And then I realize that they never get new stuff. We get always a used stuff which I fix. <laughs> so if something elsewhere on the street is broken, you know, I'm gonna fix it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you fixed my car. <laughs> yeah. Was it uh, the the game hero like fix it, Mister Fix it or something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, fi I forgot. I don't know it. what his name is. Um, uh, when yesterday, he fixed my car, he put a yeah. piece of tile on it, we need to it would, I had a big hole in it. I will put it on pause, walk with Jim outside and I will video, I mean that is a piece of art. And I will it teach is. you how to do that. You can really you know, drive the cars thousand years longer if you, if you use duct tape and, you know, and a vinyl. It is funny, that's funny. But it's um, a beautiful, I mean, it doesn't rattle or anything. And yesterday I made a skateboard for my kid. Oh. We took a piece of board, attached four, you know, whatever, wheels. Of course not. <laughs> I mean, it rolls, but, you know, uh, he just, you know, he doesn't have a sense that he doesn't have a skateboard anymore. He has it. Mm -hmm. He can, you know, uh, on, on Wii, on Nintendo Wii, you can uh, play tennis and, you know, do skateboard and you believe you you can do that, and then uh, and and ski from the mound, and then then you, you know, take a real s uh, tennis ra uh, ra uh, pedal or racket and uh, try, and it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so it took for Michael took some time to figure out that uh, you know, tennis is not as easy, but he still loves it, and, mm -hmm. and now he is a skateboarder, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> um, eventually, but you know at least there is some initiation. I mean. Okay. It just, you know, it's not foreign anymore. It, you tried it. You know, mm -hmm. you know it's difficult, it's possible, it rolls forward, you fall from it, but I, I had to hold him, you know, around the apartment I was That's rolling. That's funny. That's funny. So, no, you don't have, you know, if you're in the same situation as we are, but if you have a job, consider donating, you, if you enjoy watching our movies, and we are changing the world, and we're changing it in a very radical way, very positive and radical way. We are a tool for awakening, that's for sure. Yes. Some people awaken to certain truths because of us. And some people just find, a, you know, uh, uh, it's a remedy for loneliness. You know, we are very lonely, especially the light workers. You go around and meet people who are not even deaf. They uh, hate what you say to them because it uh, shatters their wall. They want to keep their closed uh, mainstream view and they're afraid for many reasons. They know it's uh, it's not good to be with us. So so now you go to our side and you speak to the people and like, like um, it's trivial for us. Now we are kind of, I'm in it for many years in shamanism I for, even for longer in Judaism and religious services. I'm from rabbi family. Uh, my genetic, um, of the tree I know my uh, rabbi ancestry to 10th century in Spain. They went from Spain to Russia and now we flew to America. I have me, my brother here and a cousin. So, so it's a long path. 
And initially it was from some around Iran and India and, and this these areas. What I'm saying is I lost my train of thought. Yes, you derailed. Oh, <laughs> uh, I uh, when I go to the store or to the church, I feel uncomfortable being on the side of the people who come, the comer, church comers. Mm -hmm. I feel much more comfortable on the other side, mm -hmm. behind the counter or behind the, mm -hmm. and now, now I'm on that side. I'm near Jim here. I'm kind of in between. Like uh, yeah. I'm a listener and questions and also I'm kind of doing the service. Now my, my wish, my dear wish is to become a channel. I really want, why do I have to, why can you know, it's really hard to find Jim's time and Zachariah's time and ask other people to channel. Why can't I channel? I want to sit near Jim and while well, Lakesh is saying on the other side and I'll say, hello, I am whoever, whatever, <laughs> I'm a reptilian or whoever comes through and I will be channeling as well. But then the Wouldn't question, fun, yeah? who would be asking questions? Lisa, who write them down? <laughs> yeah, I can I can write my questions to Lisa and she will ask me and I'll answer my own questions. Or they might ask each other questions, who knows? Yeah, or the aliens can, you know, uh, Buddha know. They can speak to Jesus and say, Hey Jesus, how are you? And Jesus will say, <laughs> um, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> well, I don't know. That doesn't sound like a typical conversation between them. <laughs> I don't know. They, they, how would they, they don't converse in words. I, I, I don't know if they do or not. I don't know. We should ask that. Uh, anyway. Neither one, neither Jesus nor Buddha were, are open to discussion. Muhammad was, so we can ask Muhammad. Okay. Uh, but uh, I think Jesus and Buddha were in so high vibration. So, and my questions are kind of still high, but not not as high vibration. So when I spoke to an angel, he had to kind of kneel down to me and, you know, I asked him, like, do you have breasts or things of that sort? And for an angel, it's kind of, yeah, they, they can answer that, but it's not their main uh, vibration yeah. to do that. Right, exactly. Do they have breasts? Did you ask that question? Um, <laughs> I don't remember. It's similar, but I don't know the answer to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I think they, uh, they're humanoid, but, and they are born and live for a certain time and they actually die. Okay. And uh, and when they're born, they're made. Actually, uh, he said, you know, we don't multiply. We are we're being made. So they're manufactured outside of our reality, and they're messengers of God, mm -hmm. benevolent messengers of God. Okay. Uh, but also, they can appear in a way they wish. So, if they mm -hmm. wish to appear female, they could. Mm -hmm. uh, and somebody right. told me, I don't remember who, that angels. They have all these body parts, but they don't have a use for them because their purpose is different. Mm -hmm. So they're more like made for show, you know, when they're made for to appear to humans to appear godly, but also human-like. Well, I remember somewhere in the Old Testament where they said angels came down and mated with humans, fallen angels. So they are able to do that, but I guess they don't do that in the angelic sphere. I don't know. That's a question I would. Again, again is it real? Maybe. Yeah. Um, you know. Is it? Well, yeah. Was that a real story? Is a question. Yes, yeah. Was um, it that angels mated with people? I don't know. I would ask them, but I, I don't know if it's a relevant story. Yeah. I would more inter be more interested in current affairs. Uh -huh. A little less interested in something obscure uh, or right. ancient times. All right. Uh, current affairs are becoming mom. Uh, last last news was from Zechariah last night. Um, so Pleiadian say uh, the, the queen. I spoke. I spoke to a queen, Aurea, and she. By the way, she mentioned that you know I propose for human volunteers to uh, to volunteer our genetic material for hybridization program to create hybrid children here and up there. And she mentioned that one of the main reasons for hybridization program by the Greys is to take over the world as suspected. So the Greys kind of inject their DNA into humans, place them on Earth, and, and Lisa is one of those. And when the Greys come, they can control the hybrids 
and kind of this this would be their whatever mm -hmm. agents mm -hmm. agents uh, mind controlled. Mm -hmm. So if you see someone seemingly mind controlled, what do you do? Say, I know you're an agent of the Greys, Zeta Greys. The Zeta like, Greys, yes. Yeah, a couple days ago, in the middle of the night, I was awake and it was deafening sound of the Greys. I, I assume from the Greys, as they yeah. said. Mm -hmm. The Kerr said that, that this high pitch, pretty constant sound, it was very loud. I woke up and said, hey, Greys, what do you do here? What's, the, what's up? Uh, the the dreams I got at night night they were weren't unpleasant they were quite mm, pleasant uh, rewarding I would say and I acknowledged that but you know I didn't have anything to do there was nothing happening there was no one to see in the room so I went to bed and I mean I want to sleep and I sleep. heard that too actually you do one of the nights yeah uh -huh. and I I also heard some other things but I don't know what they were but. I, I assume they were from the earth, but <laughs> you never know. So, so in any case, uh, although one of the plans of some of the greys could be to take over the, the earth, uh, many of them are good, so I'm, I'm still fascinated with the greys, especially I align very well with their peaceful, kind of peaceful nature. They are rarely or never angry. They're always upset. They kind of always scared and panicking. It's a very typical state of the mind of, for the greys, but but never angry, never righteously angry, and that's very much my. I am sometimes righteously angry, but it you know my anger is one percent of typical human anger. I yeah. still acknowledge it, but <laughs> but my anger is sort of. I'm also sometimes competitive, and greys are not competitive. Uh, the gray, one of the greys in one of the interviews said... I, I am personally competitive. Ah, are you? At, when it comes to bowling, my own for my bowling team. Ah, I like and I play volleyball, and <laughs> I love, you know... But other than that, no. I love joking on the, on the court using movements. Yeah. You can play in a way it is a joke. <laughs> like you can serve the ball, and it will fly over the net, and full, almost full right under the net. Uh -huh. And because the players are very far and they don't expect it, they, and it falls right to their feet, <laughs> and I feel glorious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often work, and sometimes I feel the other way around. That's an ace. <laughs> an ace. No, an ace is when you are doing it strong, and that oh. one, if you do it very quietly, they kind of spin it backwards. You know? oh. And it kind of goes like, <laughs> yeah. So yes, um, and one of the ch and I thought it's kind of a retarded animal. My dogs are that kind. They kind of also dominant, and I want to dominate. One of my dogs hurt her leg, her paw re recently, and she was a stronger daughter. And it, as you know, as soon as she hurt her paw. She became a second one in the line, so I give the food to her, and she steps aside, and her mother comes and eats first, mm -hmm. because then this one is now disabled. <laughs> so she's she doesn't have to eat it. Yeah, she's second in the line. Yeah. <laughs> now she just recovered. You no, know, one day later she recovered. They changed it. <laughs> so the, this competitiveness is very animal. The dogs very. Yeah. Even uh, as Garay said, the dogs originate from reptiles. They are mammals, but there is much of reptilian part of in them. Oh. So I think that reptilian and com competitiveness is also there. So I was thinking that competition is something outdated 3D and the humans are not, well, we kind of evolved beyond competition. And then I read some channeling, I don't remember, high, high energy channeling, high uh, believable, very nice, very light, and then they say the Earth in the future, maybe future humans, which I don't remember, uh, Earth in the future becomes a leader in the galaxy in sports, Olympics, oh. and peaceful competition, all sorts of new invented games, competitive games, uh -huh. that's what human brings bring to the galaxy. Oh. It's like an art of comp being competitive in a peaceful way. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so that's how my theory kind of falls apart. So now playing volleyball and 
doing jokes on the on the court is sort of <laughs> I'm I'm in peace with that. <laughs> it's our future. We we will kind of go out and and uh, in Russia you have beautiful now uh, beginning like very patriotic, very nationalistic beginning mm -hmm. uh, begin, uh, initiative. They collect children's games from last century, two centuries ago, three centuries ago. They didn't have electronic game, they didn't have television. Uh, you know, in um, 10th century Novgorod, an old northern Russian city, they they had long winters, even longer than in Russia, way longer than in Russia, because the latitude is oh. way north. You can't do agriculture, you don't go to fight because, you know, you don't do wars, you just sit for whole eight months, sit, you know, in the house, burning wood. So they had chess, and every of their kids in 10th century was literate. They learned how to read, and they played chess. Every house had chess. Oh, neat. I like chess. So we, now we go and spread, I don't know if, if chess are Earth's invention, or it came from the galaxy, I don't know, but now... One of the you know things we can learn is to go and uh, spread uh, our games and our competitive spirit in a peaceful way. Wonderful. Well, my feet are getting cold. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, um, thank you very much. Uh, join us for the webinar. Join us on the site, submit your applications, join our discussion. We invite a lot of volunteers, a lot of work is needed. Now I, I'm swamped. Now I channel Zakaria, and it's an incredible ch channel, not channel, record Zakaria, record uh, Jim, and just digesting that information. I don't even have time to record, you know, to type in this poetry. We assembled the book of poetry, but there is a lot of facts which need to be combined together. And now there is, so video makers. It's very easy these days. You just cut it from here, cut it from there, combine together. Let's put side by side whatever Zachariah says with what Jim said. And maybe you can pull out what Bashar said and what Adroni said. Uh, there is a nice channeler. Um, uh, uh, reptilian hybrid, a benevolent reptilian. If you Google uh, benevolent reptilian hybrid, I also like Distenny, uh, so Sunet, Sunet, Sunet from Distenny. She is a great channel. And there is plenty of other great channels. If you put side by side what they say on a specific topic, there is a great movie, documentary. It's called Tuned In. Spirit Channelers in America. It's about 10 years old and it's full length on YouTube, so you can watch it there. There what they did, they took Bashar, uh, Crayon, and three others, which I know, but I can't pronounce them right now. Or maybe four others. Uh, and they, they channel very different energies, very different spirits. And they recorded a lot of their channelings. And then they combined whatever Bashar says about God, whatever every one of them says about God, whatever they say about ascension, and very basic important steps, uh, physical, 3D, uh, nature of the experience. And when you hear the different channels saying exactly the same thing from different, uh, different sources, it's way more convincing. So now we have to continue that story. Now we have much simpler stories about hybridization program, kind of not simpler, they more diversified, more sophisticated, but they're, they're simple in a way, they're more down to, down to earth. So, so, so suppose we have uh, an open contact, so the whole earth shakes, the culture kind of awakens to that. There will be a lot of mess in the minds, and at that time we need to make our choices you know, the humanity has to choose, do we ally with the greys, reptilians, pleiadians, syrians, andromedans, yael, um, lirans. lirans, and so on. And the choice has to be done with information, it has to be informed choice. And right now there is so much disinformation and confusion, even, you know, Jim speaks about fourth dimension and eight feet Pleiadians and Zacharias speaks about 200 dimension and 20 feet Pleiadians. Is it, there is certain distortion there. 
I assume their scales are different. The information is the same, but translation into human scale is different. Uh, I analyze it in some of my talks that, you know, this system, numbering system, uses this number of dimension, this system uses this number of dimension, and dimension 9, and this system corresponds to dimension 5, and blah, blah, blah. But there are some reference points, and one of them is I'm asking, in, in your the reference system, in which dimension do the uh, discarnate human spirits reside? So when we die, to which dimension do we go? In Jim's system, it is number 7, and it's not Jim, it's Disdu, Lakesh, Takur, Tepe, uh, and several others. They all kind of use the same uh, numbering system. So, so that's sort of kind yeah. of home homework, and it's you know analysis and comparison and building everything in a system. So, mm -hmm. so my first book is about that. I I at that time many years ago, like three and four years ago, I wrote a textbook where I put that in a system and I sort of collected information from different channelers and wrote the text. It's a condensed textbook. Now we need a, a new edition and I, I'm inviting you guys to help. And this way, uh, if there will be enough volunteers, we probably would create sort of a Wikipedia. There are ways to do it collectively on the, on the website and I would be happy to discuss how to do that and bring more help uh, and structure it in a way it's creative. Unfortunately, I have to really go and find find the money to to continue my work. I I'm broke. Um, I have money for about maybe three four weeks, and after that, after that, I'm uh, by that time I have to like go and ask for money. And uh, obviously, I can ask for my mo asking money for that project doesn't doesn't work so far. I'm I'm getting about one thirtieth of what I really need to feed the kids and you know pay the rent. Mm -hmm. Uh, or mortgage, actually mortgage, uh, and it's you know the Rochester is the cheapest place, one of the cheapest places to live in the United States, mm -hmm. but still, still we need to do that. So I'm I'm actually already started calling people, old friends, and uh, asking. So I'm doing a, a mainstream project, uh, as main as as enlightened as the mainstream can can come. I'm developing a therapy for arthritis using combination of gene therapy and laser therapy. For light workers, it sounds like completely alien technologies. For for mainstream scientists, it sounds less main, uh, alien. They realize that gene therapy is a real thing already. We already have genetically modified plants. We already have genetically modified humans in mainstream, meaning that clinical trials already running, like there is about 200 clinical trials for gene therapy. Many people have been cured for really bad diseases. People start to see, some leukemia have been treated, some brain damage has been treated. Uh, it's very simplistic, it's not alien technology, but you, we use uh, viruses, kind of decapacitated viruses, inactive uh, good viruses to deliver DNA into the body and add some healthy genes to the body to treat certain disorders. So gene therapy is, is sort of there, and laser therapy is sort of there. If you fly on the airplane, look at your booklet, you always will find a couple advertisements about using light therapy, laser, or LED array therapy for uh, baldness, to, to increase hair growth, and for obesity, and, act and actually for smoking cessation. Those three applications, they actually work. and. Uh, I have a project where you can combine the two and really control the genes, transgenes, the DNA with light, with laser light. So I'm raising money for that project. It's tough because it's it's uh, our main slogan in the company is say no to drugs and say yes to light. And uh, basically we are proposing to replace the pharmaceuticals with lasers. It's possible already now in mainstream science but you know we need money to do the experiments and so far we get little help but not enough we need uh, and this is sort of expensive it's um, we need about 100,000 we need uh, the burn burn rate will be about 5,000 a month which is normal right it's normal for uh, for a couple of people working even for, for one person working but 
you know, light workers are so deprived of any resources, so even that number sounds incredibly high for many. So I'm going now and uh, talking to investors, I guess. Investors, yes. It's And they're greedy and they are adverse. Is it adverse? Adverse? Adverse to risks. Yeah. What's adverse the to risks. Adverse to Adverse is a good way to say it. Yeah. To risk. So that is a little risky for them. They understand that we have a chance to win, but also we have a chance to fail. So for them, it's it's questionable. So so that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, if anybody there in the YouTube, if you are into one of those areas, I would be happy to talk to you more and uh, share what, uh, you know, it's a real, real plan. And I already have done lots of experiments in that. You, I was working in the companies uh, in Rochester where we did tons of experiments. We did uh, an experiment with 55 rabbits. It's a huge experiment. And tons of cell culture experiments where we did laser-activated gene therapy. It's it's a mainstream, real. I have publications on that. So I would be happy to discuss that. And um, obviously the next step would be trans-dimensional therapy, but it's... And it can be done in mainstream controlled fashion. Basically, this is a control, this is a treatment, and you do it on model organisms like cell culture and, blood and stuff of that sort. So it's coming to reality, and even if the crisis happens, even after that, the, that is the future of the medicine. The medicine will not go anywhere. Uh, it will be there, even in a new shape, in a new humanity. We will still have medicine. It wouldn't be only shamanism, it wouldn't be only Reiki healing. There will be Pleiadian culture uses drugs, and Yael culture and Pleiadian culture uses laser-like technologies. So, so it is a future. That's where we are moving. And I'm inviting collaborators and people to think together. Today I have been to a webinar, uh, seminar, real-life seminar, which is unusual. I mm -hmm. uh, wore a tie and uh, asked important questions, and I felt like I'm uh, one of this mainstream community about genomics. Genomics develops really well, so we can sequence not only DNA, which is trivial now, we can sequence RNA and see what's happening there, and there is a lot of things happening. Uh, how to tie it to extraterrestrials? They clone hybrids, they can cure cancer, they treated... Uh, one of my friends, I need to repeat that story but in few words, uh, he was scheduled for a visit on a ship, it was before my project. But he was promised a visit on a ship for a tour, and when it took him, they discovered he has a lung cancer. He is a chain smoker, and uh, instead of uh, giving him a tour, they put him on uh, on a table and operated. Meanwhile, they asked, you know, we have already a tour scheduled. Can you uh, suggest any other light worker who can go? And uh, he suggested some uh, friend, and he, uh, they took her, and uh, she had a tour, and she saw him on the table. Mm -hmm. So he was sure it was for real, but uh, he was cured of cancer. Uh, he, when he came, he felt very weird for a few days until the operation results were cleared. He had to go to the hospital right away to be treated because he had after after effect of the operation. So they can put him on certain treatment there, mm -hmm. like infusion and stuff of that sort. So that's for real. They can treat cancer. Uh, they treated another person I know, uh, treated fully broken knee into a completely healthy leg, which human medicine mainstream cannot do. And there is a whole book of uh, extraterrestrial medicine by Adrian Dvir, a X3 extraterrestrial medicine. An amazing book. It's real. I spoke to his... Uh, associate and actually she introduced me to Disdu so so I invited them and Disdu came in response to my invitation. He came to where? Uh Disdu? Yeah. Through you. Oh okay. Yeah, well, where did he come? Somebody else. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, say, oh Disdu's with somebody else. Uh <coughs> I don't know if she knows Disdu, but uh <coughs> she, when uh, when I spoke to her I said I want to be a healer like Adrian Dvir and she asked them, and they said, Max, you're not a healer. You are a researcher. <laughs> but then, yes, I kind of, it's, it's my choice, and I chose to be a healer as well. It's part of, my, part of who I am. Right now, when, uh, when uh, Cynthia was here, 
it was very strong sensation. It was like, like tingling, very, you know, if you lay on your hand for a while and then you kind of turn and you feel tingling, it's exactly that sensation. It kind of when you blood goes away and your nerves are sugar deprived, oxygen deprived, mm -hmm. then they kind of get boost of the sugar and oxygen. You feel a tingling on, on your whatever nerves are there. Mm -hmm. So when I was sitting here, it was very strong on that finger and very strong right here in the palm. Uh, it was like, I f and I know the geometry because I kind of measured it in the past. I know it goes like, it's not a straight line, it goes to gym and it kind of enters, uh, connects to his whatever meridians and chakras. So I did, I held it and when you find a good position where it flows strongly, you just stay there because that, that, that link helps gym and helps me and we become linked. Mm -hmm. So that, that is very real for me, it's very physical. It's one of the, you know, uh, miracles on fingertips, which you have a daily proof of, uh, of supernatural things happening to you. And I know it's not physical because if you put a, I did that, I put a screen on the way of that, when you have that sensation and it doesn't interfere. And if it was electromagnetic, it would strongly inter interfere with the flow. And at some point I was in the lake and I felt, and I was meditating, I felt very strong. And I kind of moved the hands down under the water and the sensation didn't go away. And I know if it was electromagnetic, if it was electron beam or electromagnetic beam or electric uh, field, it would be strongly distorted by water and it wasn't. And uh, of course it could be imagined by me, right? I could imagine have a sensation which was imagined by me, but very often we, when we do group Reiki, we have many people feel the same thing at the same time, almost simultaneously. Once I did Reiki on someone, and I did first, I did sort of interview with him, just asking, you know, what's wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then, then I realized when I was treating him that he has sort of broken heart, more like hardened heart. He, his family upbringing was the one where his uh, compassion was... Uh, Welched. Yeah, that's a good word. I don't know what it means, but it's, that's exactly what it was. So I was uh, treating him, sending energy to his heart to heal it. And he was laying with uh, uh, closed eyes. And then first thing when, it, when, he, when he came back after Reiki treatment, he said, uh, two purple lines came together and drew a purple heart. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So these miracles happen. Uh, it's nice, you know. I never saw a UFO in real life. I saw it on YouTube and I do research and crop circles and UFOs are very convincing. But, you know, I have some proofs every day. And this poetry, uh, Jim, do you write poetry? I used to be in a rock band. We used to write rock and roll stuff. Oh, so you're good at improvisation then. Yeah. <laughs> Well, usually it takes a little while to write a poem. Yeah, I, I improvise, but this time it's uh, not me. It's Jim improvising a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but right. I do, I do. Uh, but the the thing is, if you ask my writing partner, all my lyrics are channeled from his future. Ah. So he knows that that I am real because all the lyrics that I wrote for the band. Are coming true for him little by little. Every ah, song means near something. future. Yes. Yeah, so even now, twenty years later, some of the songs he just gets because it's now happening in his life. It's like Nostradamus. Yes. Uh, what he was doing was meditating with certain tools like triangle and something else. He is um, attic, and he was writing poetry. Mm -hmm. And so he said, a lot of the poetry that uh, I wrote back then, I channeled for his life because we were together in the same room writing it was me and one other person that did the writing and sometimes he wrote lyrics sometimes I did sometimes he wrote music and we both did everything but I wrote more mu lyrics than he did and he wrote more music than I did so uh, but my lyrics always seem to be he said oh I've always known you're psychic always He's, and when I told him that I was channeling and stuff, he was going, I have no doubt. 
he goes thank he goes congratulations that you discovered it mm -hmm. so and everything and he he was like he's married and um, lives in Syracuse and he was like mm -hmm. no doubt you are he said I always knew you were psychic so <laughs> and I go I didn't and he goes well your songs are coming true all the time he goes a every year a, a different song hits me in a different way and it becomes it's like a realization of where I'm going and what has happened and so. His, um, I was channeling his life long before I started to channel <laughs> anything else. So, so yeah, his name is Derek, and he's he's an, a genius actually in music. He's a he can play guitar and keyboards and drums and. Did you try to channel anyone while you played piano? No, I never tried that. He plays piano really well. Uh, Ask Lakesh to play. I taught myself how to play piano. I don't read music really, so. Oh, you don't? No. Can so, you write notes? I I've written music, but I don't know how to really read it. It's, I can read it, but it takes me a long time. So. Same with me. So, but I can write it, uh -huh. because I know the meanings of the symbols and how long they are and everything like that. So, I can write it, but I can't play it very well. <laughs> You should, some of the time, you should put a piano here. Uh -huh. I will play my drum. Uh -huh. And I'll invite uh, different aliens to play music while you're channeling. Well, okay. And you'll have to suffer. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're here to give us vital messages for mankind, too. So, But they also, like, have talents and... A vital message for mankind mm -hmm. could be... Written in notes. Oh yes. Well, some of the crop circles they say are written in notes. Mm -hmm. They are tones, uh -huh. and um, if you put them all together, they play the tone that it makes all together. It it was dis distorted tones, but it they can put a tone to different symbols in the crop circles. So. Yeah, they they're very harmonic. So vibration is at work there as well. So. They're very harmonic. Yes. Yes. So, uh, how about you give us a blessing? Okay. And spring is coming, and something about poetry and music, maybe. <laughs> oh, you mean all at once? <laughs> spring poetry and music come together very well. Okay, but I to give you a blessing, I would, I could just, I, I just whatever comes out of my head. Pull out if you had something good. Uh, for just a blessing for the people. Okay. Let me meditate for a couple minutes. Alright. And see where, which way God wants me to go with this. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for all the things you are and for all the things you do. And we know that your will is the, the great will. And we know that you are a very energetic God. So we thank you for the winter, but now it's time for the spring. We just ask that you bring that soon because we're cold and we need the sunshine. So. We also ask you to touch everybody out there and give them a blessing of their own. Bring them joy and light and love. And um, let them know that they're being watched over. Let them know that the warmth is coming, the goodness is coming, the connections are coming. So we ask that you uh, help them and help us as well. We just want to be connected to you. 
and what is true and right and integrity and love and honor. And we praise you and thank you. Amen. Amen. How was that? Okay. Nice. Sure.